one true and living God has shown me countless miracles and visions throughout my life, which has led me to this point. However, this painting is not about me. It's about you and about the decisions that we all must make. The title of this painting is The Battle for the Soul. This painting has taken almost a decade to come to completion. Perhaps the most important message I have ever painted to date. God has written about this message. Men have preached about it for thousands of years. Poets have wrote about it. Musicians have made songs about it. And now I have illustrated a visual representation on this subject. All that you should not be ignorant to the fact there is a battle going on all around us. A battle for your soul. In the center of it all is a man and woman, God's creation masterpiece. In Ephesians 2.10, we read in God's own words, for we are God's masterpiece. Many books and commentaries have been written on the subject regarding the countless miracles within our bodies so that we may function and act as God so intended, all without need of repair, rust or corrosion, working perfectly in accordance to His will. Sin, introduced by Satan in the Garden of Eden, has changed that original plan. Nonetheless, God still made a way for man and woman to be with him throughout all existence. The catch, if you will, is that we have been given free will to choose. To choose God and his love or reject it. It is this choice that determines the placement of our existence. And it is this choice that the battle between good and evil is fought. Within the overall appearance of the painting, we see three distinct areas, God's realm, hell's realm, and salvation. God's realm is where God resides. We commonly refer to this realm as heaven. The white light in front of the man and woman signifies transformation, giving them white robes of righteousness to enter into the kingdom of God. All of us long to enter into God's realm, but sin blocked the way. When sin came upon us, death was introduced and removed man and woman from God's perfect realm. Without God's help, our fate would be sealed, even though he does not wish for any to perish, but rather once again to be restored in his kingdom. The open hands signify the risen Christ, as Jesus said in John 14, 6, No one comes to the Father but by me. Many eons ago, the devil fought against God to overthrow him, but was cast down to this world. He is bound to this world. This is represented by the chain around the dragon's tail. The other end of the chain is held by God's angel, restricting the devil's efforts and any harm he would cause it if he was set completely free. Nonetheless, this serpent, the devil, has a large army. One third of all the angels that were cast down with him, along with a host of demonic entities, all sworn to the obedience to the devil's command. Thus the battle of good and evil over your soul ensues on and shall until the return of our King, Jesus Christ. The battles all around us daily are more fierce than any have ever fought before. Yet to the common person, they are unseen, unnoticed, or even recognized. Nonetheless, the ferocity of these unseen battles must be horrendous, especially if we consider that one angel alone as described in 2 Kings 19.35, can and has killed more than 185,000 men in one day. When we consider that there are hundreds of thousands of these angels, it leaves one speechless. Moreover, these battles do not exist 
in some faraway land. They happen right next to us, separated only by a thin veil between the spiritual realm and our own. We would all be easy prey and consumed by the devil's wrath if God did not hold this beast back. Within the dark and fiery confines of the devil's realm, we see a light shining forth from behind a cloud. The devil has no light in him, but the Bible says he can falsely present himself as an angel of light to entice others to his side through lies and deceit of the main tools he uses to catch his prey. One of the devil's most recognizable tools used to entice those to his side is the Ouija board. Through lies and deceit, the devil has told us that we can speak to lost loved ones through this method. It is nothing more than a lure to drag a person away from God, leading them down a dark path, which eventually ends up inside Satan's stronghold, depicted here as a mighty dark fortress. There are many such strongholds which Satan has, such as lust, unforgiveness, envy, strife, drugs, and even the love of money. All of these enticements lead one down a path into the devil's stronghold. Once there, the gate slams shut, and it is hard to escape. Rescue can only come from the hand of God himself. Rescue in the form of salvation. However, in order for this to be accomplished, a price needs to be paid. Jesus, the only begotten Son of God, paid that price when he allowed himself to be placed on the cross. I cannot imagine all that Jesus went through, but Jesus knew, and he said yes to it all anyway. Here we see the never-ending love God has shown us in great detail. To enter into heaven, sin had to be removed, and the only way possible was for a perfect sacrifice from an unspotted lamb, Jesus. Below the cross is the open tomb. If Jesus only died for us, that would have paid the price for our sins, but not given us a way to enter into heaven. Jesus had to die and then be raised up again in order to pave the way completely so we could be with him forever. Next to the cross, is the hand of Christ snatching the keys of hell from Satan's own hand. The Holy Spirit, shown here as a dove between the cross and the hand, had guided Jesus throughout his time down here, and no doubt was by his side when Jesus snatched those keys from the devil. Next to the open tomb, we see God's mighty angels. God's angels follow every command given to them by God. Fortunately, we serve a kind and loving God. Therefore, these angels are here to protect us, to help us, and to guide us. In the foreground is an angel blowing a trumpet, sounding victory over the risen Christ and his resurrection. Still, not all believe, which brings us to the bottom of the painting. Here, we see praying hands, a Bible, and a sword. The sword is none other than the sword of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. It is by the Holy Spirit that we are able to understand God's Word, and in doing so we hear the Lord instruct us to pray one for another in all things. The lightning is a representation of the power of prayer. We have no greater power given to us from above than the power of prayer through faith in His Word. Overall, when we step back and see the entire painting, we see the Lord's hands on top beckoning us to be with Him and the ongoing battle of good and evil. As Jesus once said in Matthew 10:28, And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear Him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. God has granted us freedom of choice, free to follow and believe in Him or not. There is no middle ground. A vote of non-choice shall be considered a vote of no 
to God. As Jesus said in Matthew 12:30, whoever is not with me is against me. I am reminded of this passage from God's word. Today, I have given you the choice between life and death, between blessings and curses. Now I call on all heaven and earth to witness the choice you make. Oh, that you would choose life so that you and your descendants might live. At the completion of this painting, these words came to mind. For this purpose was I created. The decision is yours and yours alone. No one can make it for you and you cannot ignore it. Your entire existence after you die depends on the choice you make now. Do not be deceived by the evil one thinking it is not so. There is no second time around in life. The time allotted us in this lifetime is the only opportunity we shall have to determine our destination after we leave here. Choose life.